In this Grasshopper tutorial, we wanted to model a uh, parametric 3D printing fabric like this and we're going to model each part in Grasshopper and connect them together to make the final fabric like this. So what you're going to learn in this Grasshopper tutorial is how to make these two parts and then you can rotate them, put them on each other and finally by making an array of these parts, you can make the final uh, fabric in a grasshopper and finally you can 3d print it or make the final results so be sure to watch the video till the end because we want to make these parts in grasshopper and let's get started okay first of all in the grasshopper tutorial we're going to model an eye form shape like this and then rotate it and put it on the ground so we have these two parts and you can see that by changing the offset we can make different forms of this chain mail and also we can define the rectangle so you can see that I can change the size here and by simple array we can make the final results to get started from scratch what we want to do is to make the eye 
uh, form in Grasshopper. Uh, let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at how we can make this in Rhino and then uh, take these steps in Grasshopper. So, for example, I'm going to make a square here, uh, explode these uh, the edges. Simply we're going to do, the, do that in Grasshopper. Then I'm going to make an offset. For example, we can make that offset like 20 here and this one also 20 and connect a line from the mid of this edge to this one. Now we're going to convert these into a pipe. Uh, because I want to make this a complete square, uh, I have to make a pipe completely bring it uh, to this edge, okay? So the radius is going to be the same as the offset. So let's just make, select these with a shift key and say pipe and the, the radius should be 20, I guess and you can see that it's completely sitting on the edge of the square. Then we can just select these three solids, make a union, and now we have to make an intersection uh, with a plane. So I'm just going to make a rectangular plane and find the intersection between these two, and we will have the final result, which is going to be something like that. Uh, we can make a solid from uh, within Rhino and go to the extrusion and extrude closed planar curve and give it a little bit of a height, right? Maybe 20 and then control C, control V to make a copy and we have to rotate it 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And now I have to move it up, same as the thickness and we will have this chain mill. It's a little bit, uh, the offset is too much, so we're going to control that in Grasshopper. So we have a complete correct model uh, of the 3D model of the chain mill. Okay, that is why we're going to reuse Grasshopper because we have the control for the offset. Uh, what we have to do is to uh, go here and make a rectangle. So I'm going to go to the curve menu and select the primitive and go here for the rectangle. Okay. Uh, let's go and select the rectangle. Put the bifocals plug in so you can see what I'm doing. And now what you can see here is that it's an X size and a Y size. The X size and a Y size is a domain input. As you can see here, let me just zoom in. Uh, here we have the domain. Uh, to make this a complete uh, square, we have to say, for example, minus 10 to 10 which is going to make it a length of 20, for example. So I'm going to go to the math and select this construct domain. Okay. And give it to the X size. Uh, for the start and the end, I'm going to make a, a right click expression and minus X divided by two, right? Uh, and then for the end, it's going to be X divided by two now we can give it a number. For example, the number I'm going to give it to the input and the output here is going to deter, uh, to make the edges exactly as we want. Okay. Uh, to make it a square, simply we have to give this also to the Y and that is going to make us a simple square in Grasshopper. Let's just put that as an L and we are good to go and go to the next step. So the next step is to explode this square into the edges and we can find this from the curve here and go to the utility and in the utility you can find this explode. So let's just make this explode and explode the rectangle into a series of segments. We have four segments. We want to pick this one and this one to make the offset. Uh, we can do that by going to the sets and using the list item tool, which is going to select the item we want. For example, if this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three, we have to pick up one and three, right? So I'm going to use the list item and select the segment I want. For example, this is zero, that's fine. Then it's going to be one and two. So I'm going to just double click two forward slashes and type like a number, double click this 
it's a zero and two. And remember that if you're using a panel, you have to right click and select the multi-line data because it's going to convert that into a series of inputs and that is going to select this edge and the upper edge. Now that we have the final results, we have to offset that. You can find offset from curve and here in the utility, you have the offset. It's really easy. We just have to offset this and because it's going outwards, I'm going to go to the distance expression and make this minus X. So that's going to be minus X. And now we can control it, for example, from 0 0.1 to 3.2 zeros. This is the exact offset. I'm going to give that to the distance and now we can control the complete offset. Okay. Now what we have to do is to connect the mid edge of these uh, two curves lines together. So I'm going to go to the curve and uh, you can find it here in the anal uh, analyzes the curve middle, get the point in the middle of a curve. It's really easy. Just going to select this. Okay. A problem here we have uh, when you uh, simply grasshopper, when you use the offset tools, uh, even if the input is not in groups, it's going to convert that into a series of groups. Okay. And if you don't know about flatten or graph, take a look at this video up here. I'm going to explain uh, a little bit about these tools. But for example, here I have to flatten this. So all of those two curves are in one group so I can connect them together. So that is the point. If I don't flatten this and go, for example, select polyline from spline, uh, it's not going to connect them together. Why? Because Grasshopper uh, makes the commands in each group once. For example, when I'm saying, let me just explain this a little bit. Uh, when I'm saying to make a polyline from this input, first it's going to go to the first group and says, okay, I want to make a polyline from this one index object. So it's going to give you nothing. Then it's going to go uh, to the next group and make and polyline from that and give you the output. So that is not what we want. We have to flatten this so we don't have groups. And what's going to happen is that the two points is going to be converted into a polyline. That's what we want. And that's the way you have to use this flatten. You can flatten it here. You can flatten it here. Doesn't matter. You have to get the output into uh, flatten the groups so you have them in one data groups. Okay, now we have the midline. It's time to make the pipe. You can go to the surface and use this pipe tool here. Uh, let's just give this a pipe. Remember, you can over, always flatten the input so you are sure that all of them are going to be converted into one pipe. Uh, I'm going to use these two offset curves. And remember to use the shift key. I'm holding down the shift key and connecting this to here. If you don't do that, it's going to jump and take this as the input. So remember that you have to uh, use the shift key to connect it here. Okay. Uh, let's go and turn on the display and use the caps as flat. Now, as I explained in the Rhino interface, we have to give this the same radius as the offset. So I'm going to give this to the radius. That's it. And now we have those three pipes. Now that we have those pipes, we have to convert them into a solid. Why not go to the intersect menu and select the solid union because we want to unite them together. That's the way we can give it one solid. Okay. Again, as you can see here, what's going to happen is that it's going to go to the first group. It says, okay, I want to unite this input, which is only one pipe. Again, you can see that's not going to give us the results. So we have to flatten this down. So the output is going to be three closed B reps, and then it's going to unite them together. So that's why we have to flatten. We can also take that off and say we have to flatten the output here. It's just a matter of a time that you understand when to flatten and when to graft the inputs and the outputs. Okay. Now that we have the final results, you can check it out here also that 
you have one closed B rep. If you don't flatten this, you can see that you have three different results. So that is really important and you have to make that as the final results. Okay, that now that we have this, we just have to intersect that with a plane. So I'm going to go to the intersection again and use this mathematical B rep plane. We want to intersect that with a XY plane. It's really easy. We just give this and the default, I guess it's an XY plane. So we are good to go. And now if I just turn everything off, you can see that we have the final results. Uh, we can simply just go to the Parms menu and connect a surface to that to make it into a surface. And you can see how easy it is to make the size of the square and the offset. Okay, that's how we can do that. And now we have to extrude it. So I'm going to just make this an extrusion. Uh, bring that up in the Z direction. Uh, maybe the thickness is like 0.123 again, and we can name that to thickness. Okay, thickness. And this one is the offset, and this is the length. It's really simple, just three different inputs, and we are good to go. Now we have to move this up. You can go to transform, let's make it that easy. Ecludian and move. So I'm going to move that up exactly the same amount of the extrusion. So it's going to sit on the top of this eye formed shape and now just rotate it. So I'm just going to say uh, transform again, uh, rotate 3D, I want to rotate that. The center of rotation is 0, 0, 0, which is fine. Exactly what we want. Uh, the axis by default is 0, 0, 1, which is the Z. That's also okay. Now, and the angle by default is also uh, pi divided by 2, which is 90 degrees. We just have to turn that off and we are good to go. And you can see that we have these two parts. Uh, let's just put them in one B rep. And remember, use the shift key. And you can bake that to make the final results. That's how you can make the uh, final pattern. If you want to make an array, you can simply use a rectangular array. I'm going to save that in the example file. You can download this from our website. So just check out the description and click on the link and get download of the example file. Uh, if you go to our website, we have also an extra step which we have made. Let me just turn this off. Uh, we have made these parts in uh, make some Lego like connection. Uh, so you can see that we have these two parts. So in this example file, you can have these two parts, which is like the Lego connection. It's something like this and you have the solid difference for the second part. Uh, you can see in the video how we have connected these two parts to make bigger parts in 3D printing and make it uh, a bigger uh, 3D printing fabric model in real life. Okay, I hope that this tutorial is useful. Also, if you want to download more advanced example files, you can enroll in our course. The link is in the description and you can ha uh, have extra example files we have made for this chainmail lesson. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you next time. Be sure to subscribe to this channel because we have weekly examples and tutorials in Grasshopper, uh, which you can learn how to use it for parametric design and be sure to like this video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.